Okay, today I have a simple integral that I cannot solve. The integral of square root of sine squared x. And I know this right here is just the same as the integral of absolute value of sine x. And of course, we can just look at where is sine x negative and then just negate the result. Pretty much do it like piecewise, right? But I don't want to do that. I really want to end up with this answer that I got from Wolfgang Alpha. And I've been trying this for many, many weeks. I just cannot get it done. So I would like to show you guys what I have done so far. And then maybe after all this, you have some ideas that you can actually help me out. So let's see. Like always, I would like to see if this is indeed correct or not. To do so, I will just check this by differentiation. So let's go ahead and take the derivative of that first. So we are looking at the derivative of negative square root sine square x times cotangent x. The plus c doesn't matter, that will give us zero anyway. All right, product rule in action. This is the first function. I will keep that and then multiply by the derivative of the second. The derivative of cotangent x is negative cosecant squared x. Continue, we add the second function times the derivative of the first. Here we have a negative and then we have the square root, so it's 1 over and then we have the 2 and then square root of the inside, so sine square x. And then remember to use the chain rule. And let me remind you guys that the derivative for that is sine x and then square, right? So put the 2 to the front and then this right here to the first power and then one more derivative. <laughs> the derivative of sine is cosine x. All right, so that's what we have. And now let's see if we can simplify it to get that. This and that cancel, pretty nice. Cotangent x is the same as cosine x over sine x. So the sine x, sine x cancel out. That's also pretty nice. All right, so let's see what we have. First, we have positive, And I'm just going to keep it as square root of sine square x times cosecant square x. And then we are going to add cosine times cosine we have, oops, we are going to subtract because this is plus times negative. We have cosine squared x over square root of sine square x. And of course, we are not going to cancel the square root and the square. We don't want to end up with absolute value here, right? I should have mentioned that earlier, but anyway, though. Now what though? Well, this is what we are going to do. Right here, I'm going to rationalize the denominator. So that will be square root of sine x squared on the top and also on the bottom. This way, the bottom will give us legitimately sine square x. This over that gives us cotangent square x. So we are looking at square root of sine square x times cosecant square x minus here we have cotangent square x and uh, that square root of sine square x. And notice this and now we can factor out, which is quite nice. So square root of sine square x. And then the leftovers are this and that, right? This and that. So we have cosecant square x minus cotangent square x. All right, so what's this? You can trust me or you can just work it out real quick, but it's just equal to 1. Trust me. Right? This right here is just equal to 1. If you work it out, of course, 1 over sine squared minus cosine squared over sine squared, and then 1 minus cosine squared is the same as sine squared, so 1. So yes, in the end, we did end up with sine squared x. So that means this right here is legitimate. And then we didn't use any absolute value along the way. Okay, uh, now what though? Well, the next thing is like, I really cannot integrate that yet, so why don't I try to integrate just square root of x squared? So let's have a look. If we look at the integral of square root of x squared, and I know this right here is just the same as absolute value of x, and we can actually integrate this by doing the following. Check this out. We can actually use integration by parts, and of course I will do it with the di set up, which is right here. All right. I'm going to differentiate this instead, so square root of x squared, and I'm going to integrate 1. Differentiating this, we get 1 over 2 square root of that, 
and then use the chain rule, so we multiply by 2x. And this and that cancel. And then integrating 1, we just get x. All right, so this right here, we get this times that, which is x times square root of x squared. And then be careful. We have to do this times that and then put that inside of the integral, right? So have a look. We will have a minus integral x squared over square root of x squared. OK, cool. Uh, how do we take care of this? Well, we can do what we did earlier, namely rationalize the denominator like so. And you see this and that together gives us x squared, which will help us to cancel this and that. So now, be careful with this. Let's look at this equation. We have an integral of square root of x squared dx. That is equal to x square root of x squared minus the integral of what? Just square root of x squared. So as you can see, of course, we can do the usual trick, right? Because it repeats. Just go ahead and add it to here. So we have 2 of the integral square root of x squared dx, which will be x square root of x squared. Don't worry about the constant yet. And then divide the 2 on both sides. So the integral of square root of x squared dx equals 1 half x square root of x squared. And now you can put a plus c. So yes, if you want to integrate absolute value of x, you can present this as your answer, which is very cool. So I'm just going to write that down right here. We know the integral of square root of x squared dx equals 1 half x square root of x squared plus c. So now, let me show you guys my attempts of that integral. Hmm. This right here is kind of similar to this that we did earlier, right? So I also tried it with integration by parts. So if I do that, have a look. Plus, minus, if I differentiate this thing, square root of sine square x, and then integrate 1. Well, differentiating this, we did it earlier already, so I'll do it real quick, like this right here. And then on the top, we have 2 sine x cosine x, 2 cancels out, nice. And then integrate 1, we have x. OK, so this times that is the first part of the answer. It's different already, so anyway, though, let's see. x times the square root of sine square x. Good. And then we are going to multiply these two things and then put that inside the integral. And uh, we will have a minus integral. And we have this x here. And then sine x, cosine x over square root of sine square x dx. And again, do not cancel the square and the square root because otherwise you end up with absolute value. We are going to prevent that. Right here, we can try to integrate this with by rationalizing the denominator. So let's go ahead and do that. So don't give up yet. So multiply this on the top and also on the bottom. This right here gives us legitimately just sine x squared, sine square x, same thing. Anyway, sine square x. This and that cancel out, all right? And now I'm kind of happy because I have a cotangent x. And it's kind of like that, but just watch. I have x right here, square root of sine square x. And then I'm going to minus the integral, and we have x. This and that, all right? I'll just pair this up for you guys. This and that. Together, we have the cotangent x. And then we have that square root of sine square x. And did I make this worse? I did. So I am stuck right here. So I really don't know what to do to continue from here. Well, nothing wrong with the steps, but I think this is the wrong approach. So even though nothing was wrong along the way, but this right here, it's not going to get us anywhere. So no, all right? All right, as we all know, sometimes when we're doing integrals, the more the better. And also when we have sine, the best friend of sine calculus is cosine. So maybe we should invite cosine to help us out. So this is another, another attempt. I multiply the top and bottom by cosine. So we have cosine x times the square root of sine square x over cosine x. And then what I did next is I integration by parts again. But this time, I'll check this out. 
I am going to differentiate the cosine on the bottom, so it's 1 over cosine x. And then I'm going to integrate the rest, which is cosine x times the square root of sine squared x. Differentiating this is just pretty much differentiating secant, which we get secant tangent. And if you fix it a little bit, let's write everything in terms of sine cosine. So we have sine x over cosine squared x, right? That's just the derivative. And then for this right here, well, I'll work this out for you real quick. And this right here, we should use a u sub real quick. So I will pick u to be sine x. And then du is equal to cosine x dx, which happens to be right here. Very nice, huh? So we are looking at the integral of square root of u squared. And uh, that's in the du right here already. What's this? Which is just that. So this right here gives us one half. We have the u. u is sine, so we can just put that down. x sine x, and then square root, and then here, u squared, so sine squared x, like this. Don't worry about the plus c. So that will give us this integral here. So we have one half sine x times the square root of sine squared x, like that. OK, continue. This times this will be the first part of the answer. So it looks like we have what? This and that gives us cotangent. Let's just really squeeze out the cotangent. So it looks like we have some hope, right? But check this out. We have the 1 half. And again, this and that is cotangent. I'll put this down just in red to emphasize that. And of course, we still have the square root of sine square x. Now, the hard part is how do we take care of this integral? Okay. When we do this, we have a minus integral sine x times sine x. Well, let's put one half out. Yeah? Sine x sine x is co uh, sine squared x on the top over cosine squared on the bottom. And then we have the square root of sine squared x dx. <sighs> and then seriously, now what? I tried to replace this with 1 minus cosine squared, didn't work. Write this as tangent squared, it's not going to help either. Um, yeah, so I kind of feel that I might be on the right track here, but in the meantime, I also don't know how to continue, so another sad face right here. I think this approach has the biggest hope for me because I have this part which is almost that but of course it's very wrong. Um, yeah, so I, I, I really don't know. All right, here's my final attempt that I'm going to demonstrate even though I have attempt other things as well but here's another one I'm going to show you guys. So here's the integral square root. Instead of sine square x, maybe let's just look at this as 1 minus cosine square x. I feel a little bit better this way. I don't know why. And uh, you can try to multiply the top and bottom by sine x and kind of do what we did earlier. Actually, you know what? Actually, I haven't thought about that. Let me actually do that real quick. I don't know if I can do it. So let's see, if we look at this as sine x times the square root of 1 minus cosine square x over sine x dx. All right, integration by parts again. So I'll put on the di here this time. I think I have more space this way. I'm going to differentiate 1 over sine x. And then I'm going to integrate the rest, which is sine x square root of 1 minus cosine square x. And then if you differentiate this, which is the same as differentiating cosecant, or you can look at this as 12, negative 1 power. All right. But anyway, though, you'll get negative, and I believe you have cosine x on the top over sine square x on the bottom. All right, that's the easy part. But this right here, it looks like we had to do this up again. We let u equal to cosine x, du equals negative sine x dx. This is positive sine x dx, right? So the answer will be negative here. 
and then we have the integral of 1 minus this thing is the u and then square that and then this and that is the du <laughs> it looks pretty good right but do I really want to continue from here I'm just going to tell you the answer first we have the negative from earlier and then this will give us one half times u times square root of one minus u squared and then plus inverse sine yeah i'm not kidding okay of u all right and of course i'm going to put in the cosine x cosine x cosine x here and then put it here <laughs> and then this time size the first part of the answer okay but imagine we multiply this thing and that thing together inverse sine of cosine x how do we even simplify that so yeah um i think right here i kind of know that it's also a sad face um so this is pretty much all i've tried and let me know if you guys have any ideas i really want to end up with the answer that we got from wolfgang alpha of course, I don't want to just reverse the derivative steps and say, hey, that's the answer. I want to really, really figure it out from scratch. So if you know it, please let me know. That's it.